Hello, how are you? This is Candace or Sister Min Mao from Happy Catastrophe. And isn't it about time that I continued on with the coloring book inventory that I was doing? I still have a good quarter to a third, probably more like a quarter of my books to put in to my new coloring book inventory book. And um, I need to get that done before the end of the year. I have seen what you guys have all been doing and I love it and I see so many ideas for my next one that I want to make. And then I got to thinking, well, if I just get them all in this book, even though they're not in alphabetical order, they're not indexed in any way, um, it will mean that I have them all and I know they're up to date and this is what I have. So then I can do my end of the year stats and get all that taken care of, know exactly how many more books that are untouched that I need to touch. Because I have a feeling I've done a lot of them. There are very few I see here with nothing next to it. And then I want, and then I'll have them all here in this one book. So if I want to then take them and put them into an online app of some sort, just so I have them handy. If I want to redo this with indexing and stuff, I can, but I will have an accurate count of everything I have. Um, my last inventory book is a couple years old and it has lots of scribbles and crosses out and adds on and it was just a mess. So it was time to redo it to see exactly what I have. So today, we finished with some odds and ends books last time. Hmm. This is my Archer and Olive, one of my Archer and Olive journals. I just love this paper. You can actually watercolor on this paper. It's so amazing. So we have five slots already, and today I'd like to do my Kirby book. So we may only have to do a couple more slots, but we will definitely do this page and then get these pages set up with some new stickers. All right, let's set the stage. I just got home from work a little bit ago. It is cold and it froze last night. And last night was when I filmed me going and checking on the chickens because I was concerned about that. So you guys saw that video that I put out yesterday. So tonight I went out and I picked each one of them up that was roosting and put them in a coop so they could stay warm. They were very confused. They, um, <clears throat> you know, they can't really struggle, but they can squawk because at night chickens go to sleep and they can't really help themselves. So Poppy actually woke up and came out of his coop to check and see what was going on. Bless his sweet little heart. So I consoled him and put him back to bed and I put all of them back to bed and shut their doors so they can stay nice and warm in the coop. So there's no more roosting outside until it's not freezing again. Uh, silly chickens don't know enough to get in out of the cold. <laughs> Tonight I just have my water from work. That's where I work. And uh, this thing keeps ice cold all day. So that's keeping me hydrated for this video. And let's get started on Kirby. All right. So we're gonna start, I put these in order. And we're gonna start with Anamorphia. So Anamorphia um, was his first book that I have and it was done in, I need to zoom out for you, darlings. Um, yeah, I'm wearing my blanket. Look at that, so busy, so many doodles, so many doodles. When I first got these, I didn't care for them. I just got them to have the set and to, because it's Kirby. But you know what, I kind of like it now. And I'm really looking forward. Um, in fact, this month in November, I'm gonna get into one of these books that I've never tried yet. This is um, 2015. So this was his first one that I have. I don't know if there's an earlier one than this, but this is the first one I have. So it's Anamorphia. And this was one that I was, look, I haven't even broken the spine yet. I was thinking about doing something out of this one, but I chose another book instead. But I do definitely want to get into this book soon. I actually now have grown to really love these doodles. And in fact, this whole double page spread is really cool. You know, now that I've got, I won't ever do these where, you know, draw your own doodles in. So that's a page I don't have to worry about. Um, <clears throat> now that I have more mediums and better skill, um, my skill is improving all the time. I feel like these, at first when I looked at these, I'm like, oh, that's so daunting. And then as my skill improved, I thought, oh, I don't ever want to do this. That's just horrible. 
And then now that I've got some mediums, I've seen some of these done. Um, I know you don't have to do every little doodle if you don't want to, you can do a wash over them all. I'm kind of excited um, to use some of my mediums to make these easier or maybe just sit down and do every single one of those doodles. Um, I love this. I hate the idea of putting my own design in here, but maybe I'll paper piece something here because I would really like to color this ram. Yeah, that's a good idea. Put something shiny in there. Stampede! I've seen this one done. In, I've seen it done in a kind of a rainbow effect. Really liked that. I sat, I, I sat up in bed the other night and just went through all the Kirby's. And when I say the other night, I mean last night. And that one's got pumpkin. And I'll never do this. And I just um, fell in love with this older stuff. This is the one I heavily thought about for November. And when I get around to doing this book, I wanna do this page. I just think that rhinoceros is amazing. I think he's beautiful. I haven't decided if I wanna do every single little doodle or if I want to black them out or what I wanna do with those. I thought this one was gorgeous too. This would be fun to do a really neat background on. I know a lot of you have this book. Hmm, probably never. What do you think about it? I don't see as many pages done out of this as I do out of the Morpheus, the, like a, or the world books and Mythomorphia. But I kind of like it. You know, this is where Kirby started. Oh my gosh, Nico Neko. I think it's Neko Neko or Nico Neko's coloring. Her channel, she does this. Um, she does pretty much all the stages filmed. And what she ultimately comes up with was a labor of love. It took a long, long time, but it was, it's stunning. Oh, it's just beautiful. And I wanna just sort of copy what she did, <laughs> but maybe find it, you know, a few shortcuts if I could, because hers was very labor intensive, which is probably why it's beautiful. This one's fun, except that's a lot of repetitive of the same animal. This one I love. I love this double page spread. Of course, I love fish. It was amazing as I was looking through this last night, how much of this book I love. I pretty much, except for the pages that want me to draw something on them, which I really can't. Um, I love every single page. No. Ah, I've seen this one done a lot. It seems like this is a popular one for this book. Snail. <laughs> this is another one I've seen done a lot. Very, very good. I think I'd like to try something though I haven't seen so much because I'm a little, I'm still a little shy. I. This was the other one I thought about as a double page spread, but I bit off a lot to chew in October and I'm feeling very pressured to finish things and I don't wanna feel that way going into the winter season. So um, I'm being careful with how much I'm taking on for November and I already have, um, I do like to do at least one major double page spread though, but I think I already have one picked out. I don't know, I'm just now formulating my November plans. I don't quite have them finalized yet. I've got all the, I've got it all down. I just need to pare it down and then I'll do a video and you guys can jump on board with whatever I'm doing if you want a buddy. I've seen this one done beautifully. This paper is so thick. It feels thicker than the newer Kirby. This paper is really thick. This one's cool. I love to color octopus though. They are very cool. I've seen this one done just recently. I think it was Shell's Coloring Journey that did this. The chameleons, chameleons, right. Chameleons look so realistic. It's just stunning. I need to find out, I think it was Shell. I need to find out who did it because um, I'd like to use it for inspiration. They're just absolutely beautiful. I love this fox. But I think in the back of the book, it shows this one as a double page spread. So is this one in another book? 
with its whole body? I don't know. This one's neat. When I want to get out the metallic stuff, this would be cool. Now, wow. I wouldn't really know how to color this one. I guess just, if it's a tiger, I guess orange. Okay, this is the other one I was thinking about doing because, you know, my sweet poppy. And I was going to make one poppy and one lollipop or one Elvis. I'd make probably Elvis and lollipop since Elvis and lollipop are the same size. And one's white and one's black. Lollipop's white and Elvis is black. And I thought I'd make them like that. So that's in a future plan. Gosh, I really want to color my chickens. <laughs> this is a very cool one, the Komodo dragon. See, I don't mind that this realistic head turns into these doodles. I think it's kind of cool. And I think there's a lot of options for you. You can color just some of them. You can black out some, you can black out them all. You can do a wash, color washes over them, whatever you want to do. I've seen this one done beautifully, like tropical colors, very pretty. Someone did this one and they did a fan, they made the fish look very, the swordfish look really realistic. Gosh, this paper's so good. This, this guy, I feel like he's in another, I feel like he's in Worlds Within Worlds or Fragile World and a lot of people have done him there. Not so much here with the doodles. Oh, I'm not gonna draw more bees, although I might color that and put a cool background in it though. Wow. A giant squid. This one's very, very neat. I'd like to see Amy do this, Amy Ward Art, and have her do some of her really moody, spooky lighting effects on it. She's so good at that. This is the one Amy's doing this month. I watched her November plans. Um, her random picker picked this book and she picked this page. And I thought about doing it with her, but I'm just not in a flamingo mood. I'm <laughs> sorry, Amy. <laughs> I thought about it because I love peaches and pinks too. But there were just other pages that called to me more. And then I picked a totally different book. So, but I know you are doing a lot of Kirby's this month, Amy. And that's it. So, in this book, I have zero done. So, this is going to be one that I want to tackle soon. This is Anamorphia. Whenever I hear that, I want to say Animaniacs. You guys remember the Animaniacs? <laughs> Uh, Kirby Rosanas, and I have zero. All right, let's look at the next book that Kirby printed, made, and that was, unless I'm missing some, that was Imagimorphia. I don't know if I have one in this one. This one's pretty beat up. I might have gotten this one used. Had it for two years, but my books get beat up just being in their bins, so I'm kind of hard on books. Now, this paper is also thick, but it's a little bit yellower, unless my book has yellowed because it might be a used copy. All right, here we go. Oh, this one was uh, 2016, the next year he put out this one. Still doing the doodles and the hidden objects. Of course, I don't mind his hidden objects because they're all in here. I mean, they're all, how do I know that this dice is a hidden object and not just one of his doodles? You know, he's he's got so many doodles that they sort of all just flow. So his hidden objects are fine. I've seen this elephant done very well. I don't think I've ever seen this one done. That's a cool page. If you hear a little humming in the background or something. That's my fire. It's cold enough tonight that I have my propane fireplace on and that's the blower you hear. This is cool. I remember seeing this page. I don't think I looked through this one last night. I've seen some of you do this one. That's too much metal for me right now. I have a combination in polychromos that makes really cool metal, but it's labor intensive and this would be crazy, crazy long. I think I would get tired of it after a while. This is a cool page. 
Look at the dragon, the dragon in the Chinese pagoda. In the Chinese, that's cool. I like it when his doodles have something to do with the animal. You know, sometimes they're completely random, but this one is very much, there's a lot of pagodas in there, a lot of Chinese animals, China and Tibet. Very cool. I'd like to do this one. I see a lot of reds and golds. This looks like the bugs are, are beating up on the bird. The bird's trying to get away from the bugs. <laughs> and that bird looks like it's in distress. It just looks <laughs> like it's trying to get away. Oh, cool. Now, why, haven't, why don't I remember seeing these? It seems like these would be popular pages, especially like the sugar scully one. And this is more metallic. I think it's cool. You can make one like sugar skull and flowers and one more hard and metallic. I love it when two pages go together but aren't necessarily a double page spread. Because then I can do one one month and one the next month. Excuse me, hiccup. I thought this one was really neat. All the different kinds of weird fish. See, the choices you have to make in doing pages like this is what you can't highlight everything and just be a mess. So what do you highlight and what do you recede into the background? That's kind of a fun, a fun decision to make. I think this one would be fun too. You will see in an upcoming Kirby, I did a big ape and I did the best fur I've ever done and I've never been able to replicate it. <laughs> I think I've seen this one. Seems like someone did this where light was, it, the light source was down here and coming up. Penguins. Are these pineapples? These are pineapples. With just different doodles on them. I've colored a few pineapples. All of them were pretty terrible. <laughs> I, need to, I, need to, I need a tutorial on coloring pineapples if anybody's got one. Look at that. Cool, cool, cool. Ooh, this is neat. I love hot air balloons. I've colored a few pages with hot air balloons in them. None of them super successful either, but I really do like coloring them. One of these days I'll get one the way I like it. I keep practicing. These bugs are wicked cool. I have seen these done. Neat. What do you call these? Mechanica or something like that? Mechanica drawing. This is interesting. There's fish all in its roots. There's fish in its branches. It's a tree with fish all everywhere. I have to say, I don't get this page at all. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen it done either. Another one that I would probably paper piece something for these horns. I heard a chicken squawking. They're probably not super happy. They don't understand where they are. They're confused. This is neat. Oh, that's Jack snoring. Oh, I did do one. <laughs> that surprised me. I remember I did this this spring or last fall. And I, I really struggled with it because my skill level, my skill wasn't at the level to do what I wanted to do with this. And so, but I am happy the way it turned out. I never meant for the bunnies to be purple. Um, I did use the Tim Holtz watercolor pencils. That's what I use for all Kirby pages. Um, I can't remember why I stuck with the purple, but I do like it. And I wanted to make it look like they were running from the dark into the light. So I made the mushrooms more glowing on this side. I tried various techniques to give the impression of darkness, not only just a darker color up here, but also the glowing mushrooms, which was just a lighter yellow with darker around it. Uh, it went through many, many ugly stages and I had a lot of stuff that I redid that I just did over and over until I got the color I liked. Um, there's a lot of polychromos in here for shading. That took forever. And then I tried to get lighter and lighter as we go to this side, because this one's chasing a butterfly. So it's almost like it's morning. 
mushrooms. They're, they're coming out of the forest of mushrooms into the daylight. And so, you know, the yellows got more duller, the plants got lighter. Lots of little things to give the impression that this is daylight and this is nighttime. I, I loved doing this, I really did. So this would be two pages. Yes, double page spreads are two pages, one, two. They're not one page. <laughs> That's two pages I colored. So yes, absolutely. I thought this one was neat. I like this one. I have seen this one done very, very well. I think this one's cool. What kind of bird is that? It's not an egret. Oh, I used to know what that bird was called. If you know, let me know. What is these robots? Yes, 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 robots. Well, this one's giving the other one a diamond, it looks like. <laughs> this one's got some sort of weapon. I don't know if they're fighting or dating. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> Be fun to color though, if you were really into the metals. I'd probably have to take a couple months to do that because I'd have to take breaks. Same. These are cool. These are both nautical, so they go together. This is a very elaborate anchor. Oh, I really, really like it with all the fish and stuff. And look, there's an angler fish even. There's a whole, there's like deep sea fish and then koi. And then over here, little doodles and it's a compass. Really, really neat. Snail. I love snails. Another one where the background could be really cool, really a, a focal point. That's too many birds for me though. I've seen this one done a lot. Most people choose to do it like blue and pink or hot and cold or something like that, like duality. And it's just really gorgeous any which way it's done. Beautiful page. This is the one that Amy's doing as well, Amy Ward Art. And I thought about doing this one with you because this one is really cool. I love all of these dinos and I'd like to do them in the volcano. So uh, this was an option on my plate for November to buddy with you on this. Again, it's not the one I chose, but who knows? Who knows? I may throw it in there. Like you just throw in a double page Kirby. <laughs> I thought this one was really cool. I love that wagon. I'm not great or interested or very fond of coloring horses, but if I could make them some sort of fantasy, I would. This one's breaking free. Oh, everything's breaking on them. They're going loose. So this is gonna be on its own in a minute. And it's got pumpkins and kind of some fall motifs in here. So I thought that would be neat. And what looks like maybe Peter Pan. <laughs> this one is really beautiful. I think I wanna do this one around Christmas time because they're Christmas presents and Christmas baubles and a Christmas tree and yeah. I think it'd be really fun to do this as a snow leopard because it has all these Arctic animals with the hair and the turn and the owls and the walrus, the puffin and the seals and stuff. Yeah, wolf. I love this one. It's like the city went back to nature and now there's all, there's dinosaurs and stuff. And then this little derpy guy right there. What's he doing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he's up to. Boop. <laughs> I would want to highlight him. And like a giant, scary bunny squirrel thing. I think this page is fun. Cause you got both buildings and plant life, which are both fun. This is an interesting page. Again, you know me with things on top of things, buildings on top of animals. It's all right. It's just kind of been done a lot. I thought this one was neat cause it's all coming out of a chrysalis and all this stuff is coming out of it. gorgeousness. Dude, that is such a beautiful page. Oh, I'd want to do it in like pinks. <laughs> I've seen this one done. In fact, this one's in a, at least one, maybe two of his other compilation books. 
I don't have any of his compilation books. I feel like I'm never going to get to these pages. I mean, if I get to these pages once, I'll be happy. I'll never get to them twice. I love this kind of bird. I don't know what that kind of bird is, but you see it often in Japanese paintings. And I think it's beautiful in Chinese. Another clock. So these two could be done together. And this one's more futuristic. It's cool. The Nautili, Nautiluses. This one I have seen done and I love it. And this this one, the Nautilus kind of haunts me. I really want to do the Nautilus, but not this particular one. There's another one in a Kirby book that I like better. Shells with all kinds of stuff in them. Musical instruments. Very neat. I don't even remember ever seeing this page. Has anybody ever done this? Like, why? <laughs> That's a lot of snails. No. This is cool. Somehow, he makes these doodles different. You know, this has got a wishing well and a, like a Shinto shrine and there's different things. They're not the same doodles, which makes them kind of fun. Another cool page. Just the dynamics of this one. The movement in it is. And the fact that there's like this pirate ship. <laughs> I think that's neat. It might not be a pirate ship. For a horse one, I thought this one was cool. And when I feel like coloring flowers and foliage, this would be a good one. And that's it. So I've done two pages in this one. Cool, cool, cool. At least that one's not empty. And I, met, I remember when I did it, Imagimorphia. I remember when I did it that I was thinking, you know, I was on a kick to do at least one in every one of my Kirby's because I was giving a couple of them a lot of love and some of them no love. But then I didn't get to Anamorphia. Actually, I think I added Anamorphia not too long ago. I didn't have it. All right, then the next one he made was Mythomorphia. Now this one, I've done quite a bit in. I love this book. This one next to Mythic Worlds and Alien Worlds. Those are my three favorites. I just love everything in this book. And this one was done in 2017. So we have 2015, 2016, and 2017. I can't believe this one was done that long ago. It doesn't feel like it's that old. Now I've pretty much, you know, we have Shell's Coloring World and we have um, My Colorful Country Life, who's done this entire book. So we've seen a lot of these and they're just phenomenal. I love the mythology, the fantasy. I love it all. Should we go out a little bit more? And move you like that so you don't have the, hmm, does that help? These are neat. I can just see, I imagine doing everything in this book. This book is, I don't think there's a page in here I don't like. Gosh, this one's been done, and I just love every rendition of it I've seen. I've always wanted to do this one as a night scene. There's a candle in it, I mean, but then there's a butterfly. It looks like he's standing in water, so I just think this is a really neat page. You could do almost anything to it. I think this is a neat page. I've been wanting to tackle this one for a while. It's one of his rare ones that has people in it. Well, I mean, people like creatures. This, uh, it wouldn't be that hard. I mean, it's just a lot of depth and stuff. You just do different levels of the same colors and it's autumn, it's a green man. It's very neat. And I love autumn leaves much better than green leaves. I've seen a lot of people do this one. I think that one's in a couple of his compilations too. I don't even remember this one. That's the beauty of looking through these books. We we're just having this discussion in, in one of the chat rooms I'm in is how you can have a book and never color in it. And that's perfectly fine because if you like looking through it, it's just like having a novel that you bought the fancy hardcover edition with all the gilded pages and everything and you put it on your shelf, you read it once and then you just keep it. Most book people don't read a novel more than once or twice, but they don't de-stash their novels that they love they become collectors they collect them on their shelves and that's the same with our coloring books whoop <laughs> my whole system fell down 
<laughs> it was like, that's enough talking. Quit waxing pedantic. That might, if I'm using those words correctly. This one is cool. My colorful country life did that one so beautiful. I love these troll-like ones. The little creatures, the big noses and the big toes. I think they're neat. Yeah, I definitely want to do like everything in here. I love that one with the scorpion tail. Wow. The Kraken, for sure. Ooh. Ooh. My book just keeps getting stuck. Look at that one. Oh, I just love that. There's a, uh, reminds me of a Hindu god. I won't look up all these to see what they are. I've forgotten. I've, I have in the past, but I've kind of forgotten. Um, this is beautiful. Still has the um, hidden objects, I think. This one still does. But less of the doodly stuff. He was starting to change his style here. Love this one too. Isn't there a book where this is on both sides? Is that in a compilation book where they have him and then him looking at another one of him? Seems like I've seen someone do that. I get confused about what's an original, what's in his compilations. Makes me think maybe I should have the compilations too. <laughs> There's a huge spread. It's a lot of snow. Okay, Amy, your version of this, this is what I'm talking about, the way you did the moody lighting. I can't get enough of this page. She did like lighting coming up, like she did a very stormy like night scene and this kind of a stormy night dark sea and she did it at night and then there's this light coming up from here. It's just, it's stunning. It's so, I wanna do that. I wanna do something like that. So I might use that as an inspiration for this one because I am trying to learn more about lighting effects and I'm having more and more successes I think than I used to. So practicing really helps. This one is always on my mind. I just think this one looks really, really cool. I love Kirby's mermaids. They're always just slightly scary. Oh, here's the one I'm working on this. This is my whip right now. This is what I'm working on for October. You've seen this um, in that Kuretake uh, paint watercolor video I just put out yesterday. I did these, I did the ground there. It's actually got a little bit of shimmer in those granulating watercolors, doesn't it? I really like it. Still working on the trees and the rest of the bats. The moon, I really like. I got in, I dipped into um, that new giant set of Hemi gouache and it had this gorgeous yellow in it. It's called lemon yellow. It's just a beautiful yellow. So yeah, still working on that one. So I can't say those are done. It's a Sagittarian. That's a centaur. That's what I am. In December, baby. Mm, neat. Maybe I don't have as many in here done. Maybe it's Mythic World that I have all them, a bunch of them done in. Cool. Sphinx. This is a griffin, right? This guy, that guy, he's pretty cool. Phoenix, he's like a minotaur, right? Medusa, wicked. It's like Pan. He's cool. Wish he didn't have a playing card in the tree though. This one is so neat. This one is daunting to me because I just really want to make it spectacular. But I am, I am getting over that, that whole like, oh, this is my favorite page, so I don't want to do it thing. Because I'm finding that I like them when I finish doing them. I just saw Nico Neko do this one. And she did it as if it was fire. 
coming out of the sky. It was just stunning. Her pages are beautiful. She uses a lot of watercolor with a lot of water. Look at that. He's got a bunch of babies and they're all fighting. Angry babies. I like both of these. I almost did her for mermaid, but then I realized she's not a mermaid. She's not a mermaid. She's like a snake lady. She's not underwater. And then this spider lady is super cool. He has a few spider ladies in his books. Love them all. This one is real. I love doing Chinese lanterns as a light source. So that's how I would do this one. It's like a foo dog, a lucky foo dog, because there's a lot of symbols of luck in here. Gosh, looking through this, don't you know, you look through these things, you're like, oh, I just want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. I love this one. I think these little goblins are so ugly and creepy and I love them. Is this the one that's in the front of the book? Seems like there's a title page. No, not this one, but seems like this is a title page somewhere. I don't remember seeing this one. Looks like a chicken. A turducken gone way wrong. <laughs> Quack! This is one that I did for Mermaid this year. This again is all Tim Holtz watercolor sticks and um, there's a little bit of pencil shading but not a lot. It's mostly the Tim Holtz. It's all Tim Holtz. I think there's just some shading on her in various places and then some just some spots random spots of uh oh that would be the um kurataki gonzai tombi the um starry gold palette starry something planet palette it's got all that beautiful gold i really had fun with this one so that's one two no i don't have that one done so one done armed horsey Oof. This is cool, isn't it? Looks like he's going to swallow the moon. I've seen this one done so well. So well. And I do like coloring chains. I do them with pen, with the polychromos. And I would think I'd have fun with that one. I just saw someone that did this one for Halloween. And it was really cool. Very scary. Cerberus. He's cool. I, I wanted to tackle this double page for Mermaid, but I couldn't get to it. I love that it's got the female and the male version and the, all the fish around and all the hair and just everything. Just really cool. Oh, that one's neat. That one's really neat. Shooting little goobers out of his mouth. <laughs> And a diamond ring if you're brave enough to try to catch it. All right, so I've only done one in here, but I will soon have two more done at the end of this month. So this is Mythomorphia. Mythomorphia? Mythomorphia. Done one, and that's Kirby. Rosanis. All right. Moving right along. Phantomorphia. Okay, this is where I picked one out for November. I don't understand this book. It's such a tiny, tiny little book. And it's the cover's different, the paper's different. It's like, did he just like, I don't know, just squeeze this one out in between stuff? Because this one came out, um, in 2018. So it came out, but it's such a tiny little book. But they're single-sided, which is really cool, which is the only reason I got it, because if they're single-sided, I can use alcohol markers. The only Kirby's I can use alcohol markers in. So I had a couple, I thought I'd do something out of Phantomorphia for November since I have nothing done in here. And I'm considering this one, although, you know, now that I saw those others in, in the other books, I may change my mind. But I do like this one. Um, I wanted to do all those leaves and stuff metallic. I thought that might look nice. Anyway, I was think, considering that because I had a technique I was thinking about. And um, 
Oh, I've seen quite a few of you do this one. I think this one's also in a compilation, but this paper is very different. It's thinner, it's smoother, but it's single-sided, so it'll be perfect for markers. So this is more like marker paper. I don't, can't imagine pencils do very well on this. It's so smooth. I thought about this one. I think this one would be really fun. With alcohol markers, this is not a problem. None of these are. I can, I can get them done pretty quickly with alcohol markers. It's just ask me to use pencils and I'll be here for a night and a day. That one's crazy. This is another one I thought about. This one really appeals to me and I can't tell you why really. It's just so peaceful and serene. I love it. A lot of you did this one last year for Halloween and this year for Halloween, I've seen it. It's neat. More metal. He's got a lot of metal in this book, but I do like metal. I have a really good, I have good um, Copic combinations for metal. This is the other one I thought of because I was in a Halloween mood. I don't know though, and I'm starting to second guess myself because Oh, I'm starting to second guess myself. You'll see in my November plans what I choose to do. I'm, I'll decide. This one I've seen done twice and both of them used a light source in here and it was just gorgeous. So beautiful. Another one I've seen done very pretty. This one's cool. A lot of you did this one last year and this year for Halloween. I was gonna do it, but then I just didn't get around to it. I've got so many I chose for Halloween. This is kind of a neat peacock because of the metal. I don't know if this one really appeals to me. Hmm. It's got strawberries in there and roses. These bugs are cool. Didn't you do this one, Doodles? Somebody I know did this one. This is the one that I think has the rest of its body somewhere in another book. I think it has a whole body. I think, I think, I think it does. Cause I think I saw the whole body somewhere. Well, yeah, it's the cover. See, it's got a whole body, but it's only got this much. So it doesn't say that these are recreated or that these are altered images from other books. And you didn't see them in the books coming before it, so I don't know. I don't understand Phantomorphia. It's a strange little book. But as it stands now, this one's the one that's on my list for November. However, that may change. I may go do, I may actually buddy with Amy on that dinosaur or something. Because they, I don't know, looking at them now, <sighs> double page spread really appeals to me. Okay. Fanto. I need to look at my list and see if I have any other double page spreads. If I don't, I probably will change to a double page spread. I do have one in Alien Worlds, but I don't count the Alien Worlds ones because I work on them all the time. Wait, I don't have any in Phantomorphia. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> That's an untouched book. All right, Worlds Within Worlds. This was the first Kirby I got. Um... Yeah. Maybe this is the title page I was thinking was that other page, but it's not. It's very similar to it though. This one was 2019. So it's the next year after Phantom Morphia. So unless I'm missing one, Phantom Morphia was the only thing put out in 2018. Which is interesting, it's such a strange little book. Now I've seen all, pretty much every page in here done by maybe you <laughs> by a lot of you guys and they're just wonderful i've seen this one done as a haunted house like at halloween time and i do like it as a night scene with a haunted house i think that's pretty cool actually i think this is cool. i think that i like i like everything in this book i recently heard someone say that this was their least favorite book um because they felt like there was a lot of no that's fragile world what am i worlds within worlds not worlds within worlds is a great book Fragile World. We'll talk about that one. That one comes up. This reminds me of Alien World. This, we're back to the thick paper again. Thicker than Phantomorphia. And 
Ooh, it's still pretty smooth, but I don't think it's as smooth as Phantom Moon, but it's not as thick as the first three books he put out. So the paper has gotten thinner and smoother. I've seen a lot of you do this one and this one. This one is super popular. I, I want to do this one. I don't think I can do it any better than what I've seen. And I think I would end up probably copying somebody because I've seen so many and they're in my head. It's also super labor intensive. This is a very labor intensive page, but I still think I want to do it. And this I love. This one has never, ever attracted me. I don't know why, but I would do it. It's just not, wouldn't be one of the first ones I'd go. Okay, this one was on my in my mind. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? But I love this page. Every time I see this, I just love it. But holy hell, look at all that vegetation. But I use the Tim Holtz watercolor sticks and they, you know, you can just go through with various colors. You don't have to get really detailed with it. It wouldn't be hard. It's beautiful. So is that a little Shinto shine. I love it. There's one of those birds again. A fox and a deer. I've seen this one done a few different ways. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Okay, here's one I did. This is the first page I ever did and possibly the only one I ever did that was all pencil. This is all colored pencils. And this was before I got Polly's, so I think these are Black Widows and Spear Farbens. I love the Spear Farbens. They're my favorite budget pencil. And I was going for a metallic look, but I didn't really know how to do that. And I think I ended up making it look more like it's bamboo or wood, the metallic. But um, this took forever, and I love it. I really do love it. I love the palette. I tried to get, I used this really bright, almost neon palette. Um, then, you know, and I made it galaxy on the inside. Everyone I've seen that has done this has made a galaxy, and, you know, they're all, they're all kind of similar with just colorful creatures, but I really enjoy this. I think this, and then I don't think it was black, right? I think I painted that black with, yeah, with the black, the, my favorite acrylic, which is Apple Barrel Pavement is my favorite matte black. It just goes on so smooth. I really do love this page. It was my favorite page of the year that I did that, I think. I've seen this one done in a lot of great ways. I will never do that again, <laughs> do an all pencil page. Although I think I did in Wildflower Folk this year. Yeah, I think I did. I've seen this one done again, playing with light. I thought it was really cool. I always think they're holding hearts because I color a lot of gore, but they're not, right? I don't, they're just holding little ecosystems. This one more cavey and ice, and this one more waterfall and jungle. I've never seen these done. Have you done these? Another neat one that I don't think I've ever seen done. I've I think I've seen this one done. Those are like blowing bubbles. Boy. I think I need a few more skill sets to do this right, but I think this would be kind of fun, actually. This one seems to be done a lot. Of course, it's the cover. And I think this one's cool, too. I like coloring Sphinx cats. They're pretty easy. This is neat. This is a... It's not a porcupine, right? It's... um but like a porcupine, but it's not a porcupine. I don't think so. I think it's another, mm, it's on the tip of my tongue. These are cool and they're, they'd be cool done together, but in opposite ways or something. It's funny how they're different sizes. I love this one. I look at this one a lot. But this book has been touched, and right now I'm trying to get, this is the Nautilus ones I like. Is this the same as the other book? 
No. It's got the mermaids and stuff. I think these are very cool. That's neat. I don't remember even seeing that one. I've looked at this book a million times. These are all cool. Yeah, so this one, this, I've seen a lot of people do these. This is not gonna be a book that I'm gonna do in November because this one's already been colored. I've seen a lot of people do this page, this double spread. Funny thing is, it's almost everyone I've seen do it has struggled with it and has had to redo it. I don't know, something about this page trips people up. This one's, I love these bumblebees. And this flower with the circus in it, mm, cool. This one's really neat, those ants. Oh, another, anything with the koi fish goldfish I love I think this has been on my list on several monthly lists to do and I just haven't done it I actually like these too I someone just did this one uh just saw it in their completed pages for September I think I really like it I like that one too I've always thought this one was neat, like whales jumping out of a out of a lotus pond. But they're actually jumping out of the lotuses, I think. And there's like a baby whale in a in a in water encased in a flower. Look at all these little baby whales. I just think it's neat. This one's really neat when it's finished, but wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Plus, they're, they're exactly the, I mean, except for the thing in the middle, they're exactly the same. And I, I lose, I need to do them both at the same time because otherwise I just lose interest in that much repetition. I've, I've seen this one done as a red snake in a red train, and I thought that was so cool. This is one I'm saving for when I am really inspired and have the skill set to do that. Love it, love it, love it. Just the concept of the worlds within the worlds is really fun. This one's a labor of love. I've seen a few of you do this. Bless your hearts. <laughs> this one's cool. And I've seen it done really, really well. Anything underwater I'm into totally. These dolls I don't probably will never do. I would do some of these just for a challenging technique. I think this one's cool with the mermaids underneath with the, the flamingos. Okay, who just did this one and they did oh, such a neat technique. Oh, it was so cool. It was like the birds were galaxies and they outlined in white or a lighter blue. It was just so neat. Shoot, I should write down people's names when I see something I really wanna learn how to do. I can't remember. If you're the one who did that really cool version of that, just like last month, let me know, cause I wanna watch that video again. Especially if you have a color alone. I don't know if you do, but. Oh, I thought this one was neat. <laughs> and that's it. So I've just done the one. This one. Yep. Okay. We're getting there. Worlds within worlds. So, so far the only two untouched are Anamorphia and Phantomorphia. And I think that's gonna be the only two that are untouched. So November's gotta have a page coming out of one of those or a double page. All right. So now we're going to the next page and we need to get some new stickers. All right. So let's get a different pen. I'll be right back. All right, let's see if this will write. 
I didn't really prep it that well. These are acrylic paint pens. This this is a Chinese made in new top, N I U T O P. Very cheap. I kind of like them, but I use them, you know, when I don't I like things that don't need to be fancy, so I don't waste my beautiful Thule arts. Uh, let's let's. No, I kind of like this black. Oh, how about this one? I don't think we've used this washi tape yet. All right. We need to pick out some stickers. Let's bring you in a little bit. All right. So I did grab one of my portfolios. This is uh, the um, vintage one. These are vintage packets from Sticky. And I was looking through it. Um, what we're looking for is the right size, right? Like these are beautiful, but they're too big. These little mushrooms are good, but I think we've already used it. Mean, I think we've already used this pack. Yeah, I think we've done mushrooms. Let's try something else. That's the nat the mushroom forest pack. This is the ball. Let's see what this one has. Those would work. They don't really match the colors I already put down, which is, oh, aren't those neat? <laughs> those are a little bit too big. Ooh. Ooh, those are neat. Those are too big. Those would be cool for a Halloween spread, though. Food. Oh, I love the food. Oh, and I love these flowers, too. You know what? Let's do the food. They will match the color of washi and the color of pen that I use. The, um, we'll have to remember those sparkly blue flowers, though, for the next spread. All right. This is the part we all love. We, let's take this giant cake and put it up at the top. We love to peel stickers with the best tweezers on the planet, Meg. And there we go, there's a cake. What kind of cake is that? I don't know. It could be a souffle of some sort. This one says strawberry on it. You know me, I love strawberry cakes. I love strawberry anything. All right, so, um, I smeared my pen already. Let's put this cake on this side too. Cover up some of that smear I did. <laughs> All right, so um, we're gonna do food. So let's just start putting some down. Here's a, um, shout it out if you know what that is. Is that like, <sighs> almost looks like tiramisu, huh? Let's put this cupcake down next. No, it's yellow. Let's put it over here. We don't need a yellow next to a yellow. Let's put this green, probably like a matcha type cake. I just heard something crazy and then remembered I'm doing laundry. I was like, is that thunder? No, it's just a really big load of laundry being tossed around. <laughs> um, let's put this big one. is getting it like that. That's kind of fun, the food is. I got these two bunched up at the top. That bugs me when things aren't uniform. I've seen these kinds of cakes before. <laughs> this makes me want cake. Oh, I need to make some more sugar-free pudding tonight. That would really be nice. I'll do that when I get done doing this. It's already getting late and I really need to get to bed early because I have a big day at work tomorrow. Won't be doing any coloring tomorrow work or uploading or anything, but actual working. <laughs> Ooh, look at this little like eclair type thing. I think it's like an eclair type thing. Food. This page is going to make me want to eat every time I see it. 
And last but not least, a pile of cookies. Yay, cookies. But I do want to make pudding, so I'll make pudding after this and have some pudding. It only takes five minutes to set, for goodness sake. All right, before we lose this, you don't know how many of these little sheets that are half filled I have laying around, because I forget to do this, and that's put them back where they go so that they can be used for something else. Another day. So many stickers. Would you believe it? I have like, I don't know, six or eight of these full of stickers. Good thing I quit that subscription eventually. All right. We're ready to come finish our Kirby journey. So what do we have next? Fragile World. This is the one that I heard a very good argument about why it's a difficult book. Because it's so realistic. And so you feel like this colorist said, I feel like I have to do the things, you know, realistic in the colors they are, which kind of takes away choice and also is difficult, you know. So I get it. I totally get it. I think that's why I don't color in this one very much. But I have colored in it because I remember coloring in it. So we'll see what it is because I'm not sure I remember what page it was. Oh, that's rough. Okay. I hate doing that, but we have to do that. I think I bought this before I knew how to do that. All right. Now this one was 2021. So I don't have anything from 2020. Did he do a book in 2020? Oh, see, I haven't even looked through this book for probably a year. Oh, that's, ouch. Hold on a sec while I get myself comfortable. Ew, I just hurt myself. Okay. That's Snow Leopard. That's beautiful. Mm. But the neat thing about it is, is he has in the back exactly what these are. So you can look them up and find out how to color them. So yeah, if I mean, if you want to practice your realism, this is a great book to do it because these aren't fantasy pages. This is his only book that's not fantasy. So these are all endangered species, in case you didn't know. And for that reason, I love this book and I'm glad that it's in my collection. That's a tapir, right? I've seen so many of you do this one and, and it's so beautiful. I've seen you do it with some incredible light sourcing. Neat book. This one looks like it might, we have another book with, another one with monkeys. <laughs> These are chimps though, I think. Isn't that cool? I love it that these are, are endangered animals and or threatened animals and he's calling attention to them with this book. This one I've seen done quite a bit. Just cause, I mean, their faces are so dynamic and fun to color and then surrounded by fruit that they like to eat. That's pretty cool. These wrasses are really neat. I would love to do them because they're also pretty colored. Meerkats, aren't they? Some kind of prairie pos prairie dog thing. Pandas. Okay, why is that on there? Have I not? Oh, I haven't fixed this yet. Because why? Was I planning on doing something more to it? Let me smell it. No, it hasn't been fixed. I think I was planning on, oh, I was planning on f working on this background. You know what, I, I could go over it again. I didn't have the matte acrylic back then. This was a very, this is an old one that I've done. So I, I think that's what I was wanting to do, was repaint this background with matte acrylic now that I have a really good one, and then I'll fix it. But, you know, for, and I also did something there. This was a long, this was a while ago. Um, that I did this. This was when I first started coloring probably in, in 20, well, this was in 2021. It was probably right at the beginning of 20, when this first came out. Um, this was like the first page I did. And like all pages that we did, you know, years ago, we can see things that we would do differently now. But I'm, I can see things that I was really pushing myself back then, like shading and stuff that um, I really like about this page. So yeah, I'm happy with this page, I like it. 
It sure does feel like it's been fixed, but doesn't smell like it's been fixed. And I do have this here, so. That's one. That might be the only one in here. I love this hippo. This one. I've seen quite a few of you do this one. And I've seen it done so well. The water is always what impresses me. These birds, what are these birds? I don't know what these birds are. Heron? Elephant, I've seen quite a few of you do this one. Not so much these owls though. Oh, I think this one's cool. This crocodile with the turtle on him. And the, I love, I always love an, a land underwater, overwater type page. I'm never quite sure how to do it accurately and to make it look good, but I love it. I've seen this one done and you'd think this would be really boring and kind of, but it, I saw it done, it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Both of these are cool. I love that rhino. I really am drawn to the rhino. These birds are neat. I like the pine cones better than the birds. <laughs> I love coloring pine cones. Turtle with thing on its back. Whale shark. Love it. Dingo got my baby. That is not a dingo, Candace. And that's a terrible Australian accent. It's cool. Oh, I thought about this one many, many times, but I wanted, I do want to do it realistic. I, first, I thought I wanted to do it like fantasy colors because axolotls, there's some kind of crazy magical creature, but I think I do want to do it um, regular, you know, real. Although, don't they come in different colors? They're not all just that pink, are they? This one's popular. Why not, though? It's orangutan. It's so cute. Koalas. Mwah. Chlamydia koalas. Wow. I'm full of it tonight. Look at these whales. They're so huge compared to those rowboats or yachts or whatever they are. Oh my gosh, they're giant. And look at the little scuba diver. I'd be screaming all the way. That's cool, leopard. I've seen this one done quite a bit. The little red fox. Red panda? Is that what they're called? Red panda. This was interesting. I don't even remember seeing this one. S manatees. Oh, sweet gentle giants. These are like uh, prairie chickens, right? Prairie something. Hens. Prairie hens. Ooh. That one would have been fun to do for October to look up these bugs and see. Because bugs are fun because you can make them shiny. You know, use some glossy accents or just some coloring effect techniques and make them shiny. Otter eating an urchin. He says, mine, 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 mine. Is that what the crabs say? No, the crabs say, a a a a a a. Are you with me on that? These are dingoes. They ate my baby. No, they did not. And they're not dingoes. If you're going to do that particular tick, you need to learn a better Australian accent, Candace. Now this, I think I've seen. Oh, I don't know if I've seen people do this one. It's really neat. I'd want to, I'd again want to do something with a lighting effect. Amy, do this one so that I can copy you. Little mice. Aren't they cute? I have no idea what they are. Are those kangaroo mice? <gasps> okay, I've seen him done a few ways. Oh, he's so cute. Every time someone does this little, what is he, a hamster? I don't know. He's just so cute. Oh, he's adorable. Pangolins. Do you know that they're almost extinct? And the reason they're almost extinct is because in the far in in China especially they are considered an aphrodisiac and so they like kill them for their glands or something i mean it's like i'm sure it's not only china but it is when i looked it up it mainly said mostly china it's like come on people let's not wipe animals out so we can get an erection narwhals okay um 
I saw, who did this one? It was gorgeous. It was so cool. It was like looking down at a pod of narwhals. It, I don't even know if it's called pod, but I want to research narwhals because for the longest time, I didn't think they were real. I thought they were, you know, a story, a mythological creature like unicorns. They're the unicorns of the sea, but they actually have, I mean, what are those horns? And are they harvested? Do, you know, people want a horn to get a, to get, to get brown chicken wow wow? It seems like that's the main reason to wipe out whole species. Doves? I don't know. Those look like doves, don't they? I know I can look in the back and figure it out, but it's more fun to guess and be wrong. Some kind of crazy, creepy eel. This page would be fun if those birds are really colorful or something fun to color. This page would be neat. These are a form of dolphin, I think. Dork! <laughs> what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Um... are Tasmanian devils, aren't they? They are also critically endangered. This looks like it could be the Galapagos Islands and those penguins that live there. And that's it. All right, so I've done one a very, very long time ago. Yeah, this book's a little intimidating for me. Um, and honestly, I, I'm not as drawn to it as the others. Although I'm glad I have it, and I, I will do more in it. It's I like the fantasy, it's just my style. I, I like the fantasy, the, the, you know, the mythological stuff more than the realistic stuff. Fragile world. Uh, Kirby Rosanas, one, okay. We're down to just the last couple. Hang in there. <laughs> I'm so glad to have these entered though because these have been confusing to me since they're, they don't exist in this book yet. Um, Cause this book, I need to have all my books in there, especially the big series that I have. It just would make life easier. Okay, Mythic World was my very favorite before Alien Worlds came out and now they're pretty much tied for my favorite. So I do have a few done in here. Look how hard I am on my books. This one came out in 22. So except for 2020, oh. Oh, 2020 was a COVID year. Maybe that's why he didn't have anything come out. Nobody was doing anything that year. Um, maybe that's why he only had that little one. So he's only missed one year unless I'm missing a book. There's only been one year since 2015. I love every page in here. So every page I think has potential. Okay, this was the first page I did in here. Um, I am very proud of this page still to this day. Uh, this was, I looked up a tutorial on how to do fur. So all of this is Tim Holtz water color pencils he has a beautiful pink that I have and so all this is is that um, then this is polychromos I had that very small pack of polychromos and it had the right combination to do bamboo although I think this time I made the bamboo look like metal I was having a hard time with my metals and woods some glitter pen but the fur um, and this is all pencil. I did the whole, I looked up this castle. Um, it's ancient. It's in Japan and it's the only black castle that still stands, I think. And you can go see it today and it's on, it sits on a rock with the ocean, but I made everything pink. Um, but I, I looked up how to color fur and I watched a tutorial and I can't tell you now who, who gave that tutorial. 
But I followed it, and this is the best fur I've ever done. And I've never been able to replicate it. And I can't find that tutorial. I th there was just something about the order of the way you put down the light versus the dark strokes. This is all pencil. You have to do it pencil strokes. It's very tedious. But then I made the part where you could see like the light skin. That's me. I made that up. I thought that would make it more realistic. Um, but I can't remember now. Was it dark on? Would you do the light first and then go darker, darker, or do you and then go and then go back and put light on? I can't remember. And I've tried doing fur in a lot of pages since then, and I've never been happy with it. So. I need to just maybe look up a new tutorial and see if I can. But there was a very specific way to draw fur. And um, I love this page. This is one of my very favorite pages of all time. So that's one. Oh, this creature is so cool. So cool, so cool. It's cracking. I've been wanting to do too. Again, with a light source underneath him. Ooh, what what bled through? Oh, oh! Did I not fix this? Yeah, it looks like I fixed it. Maybe I didn't fix it in time, or maybe I closed it before I fixed it. Oh, that can be fixed. This is Baba Yaga, of course. A lot of you have done it. I was inspired to do it like a forest fire was behind her um, because I had just been through a forest fire. Um, it kind of morphed into something else, but I still like the red because um, I went through this really bright blue, so that's not really how a forest fire works, but I made her hair on fire. I kind of wanted to make it look like it was on fire. I think I went to this blue just for color's sake because it looked good with the red, but it doesn't make sense with the story I was trying to build. But I really like this one. I love the lighting that I did on the birch trees. I think um, this was my first attempt to make a scary creature look realistic using color and shading. And um, again, this is all Tim Holtz watercolor stuff here, all of it, um, and all of this, and then with some pencil shading and a little bit of white gel pen on their hair. Yeah, I like her. There's two. I, I wanna do this one someday. I want to do them all. I saw someone give like technique advice about this page and it was really good. All good. I feel sorry for that elephant. <laughs> I always feel sorry for the elephant when I see it. I just think there's so many ways you can alter these pages or do them in unexpected ways. Um, I love this one. This is always on my mind, this page is. I want to make the runes that are carved into the tree glowing. This one. Oh, I have been just waiting for when my skills got good enough to do what's in my head for this one. I think I could almost pull it off. I love this page. I think it's terrifying because they're coming, you know. On a dark Scottish lock. This one, I just want to have fun with light and dark because I would make all of these lanterns glowing. I just think this dragon creature is very cool. I love this one over here. I've seen her done so many different ways and all of them are beautiful. This one I think is very cool. I like the whale skeletons. She would have been fun to do for Halloween. Creepy guys. These two are fun. Um, very busy. This one I've wanted to do, but wow, look at all those coins. And I would want to do them right. <laughs> so that's always daunted me. Another one that I think would be fun to do. But this one's not going to be in November because I have colored pages in this one. I 
seen this one done a lot, both sides. I've seen this one done with her in red, I think, which I think is cool. And I didn't realize these were teeth till I saw them colored. And that is frightening. I just saw that Nico Neko, I just saw her do this one. So beautiful. She made very dark and glowing, things glowing. It was unreal how she did it. Beautiful. And I think I'd like to follow her color along. I've always thought these were cool. Plus, because the door's opening, so you can make all this light coming from here. I just think that's neat. This one has always fascinated me. I love the movement in that page. This one is really cool. Um, you know, it's a lava monster, so you've, I've mostly seen it in blacks and reds, but it's just so beautiful when it's done. Oh, uh, this bright page is my Rainbow Serpent, an Aboriginal um, myth story. And this is all done in, of course, all of this, including most of the snake, is done in the Tim Holtz watercolor. And then there's acrylic all in here. This looks like maybe just regular watercolor, or, or this does, this paper is so smooth that sometimes the watercolor smears a bit. I know that I also used Rosa watercolors because I didn't have all the colors that I wanted in the Tim Holtz. So I think I just used those two things and then a lot of white um, Posca down here. I love my rainbow serpent. It's so bright. And then there's a lot of gold glittery stuff everywhere. You can probably see it shining. So that's two pages. Are we are we at three now? We just have the, the ape. No, we have Baba Yaga and the ape. So one, two, three, four now. So we're at four. I think these are harpies, right? Another eyeball one I've seen done so well. Centaur, I should make her like me, but I have to shave her head, ha <laughs> ha. Oh, this one's really cool. Seeing these, I especially like that guy. <laughs> He's wicked. I don't remember this one being, seeing this one. This one's a popular one to do. I really wanna do it too. Love it. Love this one. Love it, love it, love it. This fish has hair. <laughs> love this one too. All those crystals would be fun. This guy I've seen done so scary. So scary. He is cool. I just saw someone do this one. And it, it was great. I've always wanted to do Shang Yu and the rabbit. I've always wanted to do this one. I wanted to do it when it was Year of the Rabbit. What was that, last year? <laughs> Missed that. These two are super cool. I would just make them so bright. Have all the colors. More coolness. Okay, I did both of these in different years. Um, this, I don't remember which one I did first. But this one, I just loved her. Now, I made her... Uh, wallpaper. It's shiny because it's fixed. I made her wallpaper look like it's dingy and old. I wanted this to look like an old abandoned tea room or something and then you know where she's taken residence up in there with all of her webs and she's trapped her man. Again this is all Tim Holtz watercolor. Uh, and I think there's some pencil work. It would be the polychromos again, that small set I had back then. And then I just made it look dirty and dingy on purpose. I like that one. And then this one I did for Mermaid last year. 2023. And I uh, this is a lot of pencil. There's a lot of pencil in here. And it, it, this many colors it would have to use, like back then the Color set probably was in there or the Shapiro Farbens. I think this one might have almost been all pencil. I think I did it again. Yeah, I'm seeing pencil in this. The background's pencil. 
Yeah, I think I did it all in pencil. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> I do love this one. She turned out just what I wanted her to turn out. In the back, Kirby describes she's a river siren. She's in rivers and describes her as having green hair. And these are those um, arowana fish. They come in different colors. I, I don't think they come in this color, but I made them that color. I like this one. Four, five, six. That's six in this, in this book. Gosh, these pages are great. All right, so I did six out of this one. You know, I'm telling you, I'm feeling more of a double page Kirby than I am the Phantom Morphia now. I think that's gonna change. But it can't be out of this one because I have one, two, three, four, five, six. It needs to be out of Anamorphia then. Because that's the only one that, if it's not out of Phantomorphia, it's going to have to be out of Anamorphia. Okay, we're on the last Kirby I own, and that's Alien Worlds. And I, you're in for a treat, because I just finished the whole first planet. So I have a whole planet flip through. So one, you know we did the title page. This is for the hashtag Alien Worlds Data Report, which is a group I run, an Instagram chat group. We have almost 60 people in there who are working their way through Alien Worlds in whatever order they want. We all start with the first planet with outfitting our ship and then the first and going to the first planet and then we go wherever we want to after there at your own pace. There's no prescribed pages or whatever. And we have space names, commander names. I am Captain Catastrophe. My ship is a close SS close call. And it's kind of dingy and dirty and old and held together with duct tape. We have space explorers of all sorts, all levels. Uh, we have an admiral, we have a science explorer, we have an artistic one, we have all kinds. We have um, ships that are solid blacks, ones that glitter, ones that reflect color. One is a Christmas ship. I mean, it's a fantastic group of people and we just have a blast. It's a very active chat and a lot of fun. So there's one. This is two, three. This is the inside of my ship. It's very old school. So I used um, all of these like uh, primary colors and made it look very 70s and retro. I thought. You should see Jamie's of Jamie's Coloring Love. She actually has, I think it's, it's yours. No, not Jamie. Who is it that has the dead astronaut? One of them has a dead astronaut floating out here. It's awesome. No, Jamie's has her and her kids in chibi form, like an anime chibi form all around here. She's got them placed in here. That's right. She's inserting herself into it. Is it Fef Creates, CN? Is it you that has the dead, the dead astronaut floating? There's some really great, great, great pictures. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, just coloring some of the planets I'm going to go to. Six, seven. This is the asteroid belt. Some people chose to find their way around this and not go through the asteroid belt. A lot of us went through it because we found it kind of actually meditative to color. <laughs> but uh, it, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of rocks. There are some that are just so beautiful. They use shading. I mean, just gorgeous pages. I'm going to have to recount these because I've lost track already. But here is me landing on the surface of the Lost Planet. And this is the color palette I chose for this planet. Um, every planet I'm going to see is going to have its own palette, of course. But this one is a very verdant, green, lush, forested planet with all kinds of little critters. This is the solar giant from afar. And then I get out of my ship. Here I am on my ship. There's that asteroid belt I went through and I get to see the solar giant up close. He, uh, he or she takes in energy from the sun through their antenna things. This is the apex predator who works with camouflage. Um, they're the top of the food chain and sort of a lazy hunter. So they entice, they lure creatures to them by looking like a flower and then they eat them. This is the sentient being. Um, I made her scary. 
course I did. Uh, a lot, she's supposed to be sort of like protector of the forest and um, sort of keeps the forest together. And these are all of her messengers and stuff. But I made her more of a parasite on the forest, <laughs> sucking the life out of the trees that she's attached, that she's around and the plant life. And her minions are all these black, scary spy type creatures. And I made her very shiny. She's very alien looking. And then this was the last of this paradise. And these are the little guys that live in the foliage in here, really tiny. They're very tiny. This is very blown up. They are just uh, little messenger creatures. They carry messages to and fro as well. I'm not sure whether they're malevolent or kind or neutral, but I didn't get too close to them. And there's a lot of shiny stuff on them too. And this was done a lot. All of this, and I haven't been telling you what it is, but all of this is Tim Waltz watercolor. Unless it's shiny, then it's a gel pen, but everything is. Now this has some pencil shading in there, as does uh, a little bit on this one, less on this one. A lot here, but then I gave it up here. I didn't notice too much of a difference. So this is Tim Holtz watercolor pencil with shading by Polychromos. And this is Tim Holtz watercolor with pretty much not much shading at all with pencil. I went back and forth. Some things have a lot of shading. This one has a lot of shading in it. This one does too, this one does not. It has green wings. I was just ready for it to be done. And next, I have moving on, and I'm flying to the floating world. So I'm coming up with a palette for this one, and then I'll get started on this. This one is never in my plans, because it's always in my plans. It sits right next to me, and I just, once I come up with a palette, I'll just chip away at it and work at it. So it gets worked on constantly. I haven't looked ahead, so I don't know what the rest of the plants look like, because for my journey, I'm going down the agenda that I was given by headquarters, and I'm just going to planet to planet and I haven't looked ahead, so, um, which makes it difficult to pick out a palette because I'm not even looking ahead on this planet, but it's also kind of fun because it's like, oh, I see this for the first time as same as my character sees it for the first time. So a lot of fun. So let's count. One, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 12, 13. I have 13 pages done in this one. And that, once we get this in here, concludes Alien World, oh, Kirby Rosanis. Alien Worlds, 13 is said. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Um, Kirby Rosanis. All right. Yay, that feels really good to get those in there. Okay, these will be coming out more, 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 more. <laughs> I got a little distracted with other coloring videos that I was doing. I have so much, so many things that I want to do. So many things. Um, I have so many videos planned, so many already filmed that just need edited. It's just very, very productive right now. I am coloring a ton. I took on a lot for October, so I'm trying to get that done. Um, I am absolutely loving my coloring journey right now, having the time of my life, having a blast. Thank you all who reach out, say hi to me and check on me when you don't hear from me for a while. That's so sweet. Thank you for um, watching my little videos and for coming along on my journeys with me. And um, watch out for the next one because I'll have another clump of books that I need to get in because I want to get this inventory done by the end of the year so that I have all my stats and we can know finally what percentage of books I have left to touch. All right. You take care of yourself because you're the only you that's out there and I love you. All right. Bye-bye.